All right, we're back. Day two. Got our oil pan here. Looks like it got thrown off the truck a couple times. It's like before I went home yesterday, I ordered it from Advance so we could get it to Spectra oil pan. Definitely better than what we have. And I got a new gasket too. So I just opened the oil pan gasket. Here's that. So this actually must be for the upper half of the block is all I can assume, you know, the upper half of this pan uh, because I'm no rocket surgeon and I'm pretty sure that is not the right gasket for the pan. So the pan must be just silicone, um, which I'm just now observing. So we'll stuff that back in the box, send that back to the parts store so somebody else can get the nice greasy fingerprint open box uh, stuff. And they can worry if it's right damage or it's not going to install. Uh, so I'm just going to take the oil pan is uh, very straightforward. It's very wide open. I'm just going to get all the bolts out, all the zippies at, and uh, use a wire wheel or something to clean up the old silicone. And we'll get the new one stuck on there. So yeah, that was super simple. I'll just took cordless impact, buzz the bolts off it, smacked it off with a hammer. Uh, fortunately, I was worried that they might have hit the uh, oil pickup tube there. But that looks like it was really intact compared to where the pan was smashed in. So I got all the old silicone off. I'm just going to go through and clean it up with the good stuff. Make sure we got a good clean surface here. I went and hit it with a scraper. And then like I say, we'll just get this re-glued re on there. And that'll be good to go. And we're probably, I looked at the pan on the old engine. It's not even worth taking the pan off that old engine. That would be... Big fat waste of time. Well, the oil pan slipped right on there ever so nicely. And I've got our new water pump gasket too. I sent that other one back with the water pump. This is about twice the thickness of the one that comes with one of those Wing Wong water pumps. Uh, this is just like the OEM one. So we're going to put this back on there with the OEM pump. Um, and it can easily be reached from right under here, even though it would be hard for you guys to see. Um, there's really not much to show, that's only five bolts. But, uh, you know, like I already cleaned off the surface and I didn't realize how easy it was to get underneath. I know we still have tightened on that uh, motor mount and stuff. But realistically, when I'm right here on this side, I'm going to take and put the water pump on. Um, I did get the water inlet tube here. Uh, let's see what that looks like. So we got this new water pump inlet tube with. Uh, the extra nipple on it there. Right from the motherland of China. Dormant. I hope it doesn't leak. The welds look pretty crappy. Um, yeah, like super crappy. Well, we'll find out. But there's that. That's going to go up on there. It did come with a new O-ring. Uh, neither one of them are really kind of worthy of saving. The other one on the old engine, if you remember, you know, the paint was all flaking off. It's probably just a matter of time before that's perforated and peeing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put that on. We'll throw the harmonic balancer back on and the uh, bell tensioner. And that'll be all the mumbo jumbo on this side of the engine. And then we'll just kind of keep on trucking. I got, some, got quite a few appointments today, so it's gonna be kind of hit and miss on this. Uh, however, I would like to have it done and hear it run and do some kind of victory dance. Water pump, gasket, I'm freaking believable. I wish we had another store other than Advance Auto to deal with. Besides having to call down there and talk to all the 12 year olds that work on the front counter, then you get shitty parts all day long. And here we sit, back to square one. Probably gonna have to wait till tomorrow to get a, a gasket through Chrysler because call Advance and well, what year is it? Jeep 3.8 V6. We're working on a minivan. I just called the booger pickers. That place just pisses me off, I tell you what. So, supposedly, they can have the right gasket tomorrow late afternoon. So it's going to bonus back another, you know, 30 plus hours on this job because we can't put a water pump on it now. <laughs> Uh, um, 
that's it. Napa can't get it. Chrysler can't get it. The other independent parts stores around here can't get it. Nobody, nobody can even have it. Closest one's in Los Angeles. Um, I don't know if it's going to be worth getting the pump because the the pump they have, you know, the, the crap pumps they sell at Advance Auto with all the rest of their crap parts, the gas gets only half the thickness of that one, and I don't know if it's going to cause, you know, this hub to set in a different depth. You know, we've already been down that road before on another video uh, with 2.7 and all the cheap aftermarket crap they sell that just, it will not fit. You put the pump in, the uh, impeller hits the inner housing of the timing cover. Um, so you just can't, you just can't use them. They make parts that you can't even use ever. <laughs> I actually did a video on it, showing their part, putting on a Chrysler 27, thing locked right up tight. You know, of course you call the tech sport, you know, you're the only one in the world who ever had the problem, blah, blah, blah. So anyhow, this is the typical MO with Advance Auto and their crappy parts. That's just how it is. But we don't really have another choice around here because that's all there is. So. Uh, I guess that's enough pissing and moaning. Um, I think I'm going to call and order their other pump, have them bring up the pump. We're going to try the gasket. We'll put it on. If the impeller doesn't hit, then fine. We're going to use it. If it does hit, then, you know, obviously we're going to have to wait till late tomorrow, but I really don't want to wait till late tomorrow. I don't have till late tomorrow. <laughs> Just keep moving forward here. Um, get our uh, torque converter lined up, hopefully. Find the bolt hole. Oh, come on, baby. Very close. Oops, there's one. So we'll start getting our torque converter drawn down here. There. I don't mean to piss and moan about Advance Auto, but I tell you what, I just go rounds with that place. They always want your, uh, <laughs> you want a good story. We're putting this in. They're always uh, they always want your commercial business. They want to be your you want to be your commercial account, and uh, they think they got this big commercial business, and because they got like one guy in the entire store that you know knows the difference between a you know fuel injector and an ashtray, where everybody else is out front selling air fresheners and armor all. And they tell you how they want your, your commercial business, and they're going to get these great discounts, and you know they got all these levels of platinum and diamond and. All that horse crap, because that's all it ever amounts to. And then the joke is, they can't even compete with themselves. So the other day, their district manager was down here, and my commercial account manager, store manager, and some other ding dong that you know got some job there, some sort of authority, and uh, you know wanted to know why you know I don't spend money there and things like that. And so I told them that you can go online. I'm moving this with a screwdriver because I don't have the balancer on yet, which I probably should put on. So I told the guys when they showed up that if they could compete with themselves, I'd be glad to buy from them more. You want to know what I meant? So I showed them that you can go to advanceauto.com as a DIYer and you can Google the Advance Auto Coupon, TFT40 or TFT31 or whatever it is, and you can get 30 to 40% 40 off 100. So 30 to $40 off 100. Plus you get $20 in speed perks. So essentially, you can get $60 off per $100 spent, break your orders up into $100 orders. I'm not a mathematician. I didn't really do that good in school. Never went to college. But, uh, you know, taking $60 off 100, $30 off 100, or $40 off 100, I don't care which promo code you use, is better than any. Oh, and you can get it, uh, you know, as a business, you can buy it uh, tax free. You just have to mail in your tax form, or not mail it in, but uh, fax it over. And uh, they take right care of you, they treat you nice. And then you go to the store and you pick it all up for free. There's no delivery charge. And the guy just straight out told me that, well, they can't, they can't do that. They can't give me that kind of discount. They can give you, you know, five or six percent, but that's about the best they can do for a commercial business. And then they have the audacity to sit here and they want to call you their partner. Like they, I want you to partner with us. 
Well, I don't know the definition of partner, but I think if the partner is giving your customers a better deal than he's giving you, he doesn't really sound like much of a partner to me, does he? I don't know if that makes sense or not, but uh, they really couldn't wrap their heads around it. So uh, they tried to make like funny jokes and stuff like that while they were here. To, I don't know. I don't know if they thought I was like that stupid to sit there and make all their you know corny jokes and observations of my shop and things that weren't even really funny overstating the obvious but whatever dude if you can't compete with yourself or give me the same discount that you give DIYers then why would I want to do business with you so I used to be their second largest account we used to have a fantastic commercial account manager um, this is actually a lady that worked there and uh, she did a fantastic job and she has moved on to other stores that they that are tanking uh, because of their crappy service and that so she's no longer here and they got this new guy who used to be a manager for Walmart and he sucks <laughs> I just I mean there's there's no nice way to put that that's straight that's straight so you know he goes from you know stocking shelves of toilet paper at Walmart to you know now he's a big Big parts guy, and you know, he's pleating more on. So, I don't mean to really piss and moan about it, but I, I kind of do. I gotta get it off my chest. I actually hope Advance watches this and they can learn from it. They don't, as a, as a business and a corporation, they don't care. I'm just, you know, I spent 70 to $75,000 a year there. When it comes down to it, they, they don't care. That's, uh, you know, there's one of me, but there's 10 million DIYers, so why on earth would you invest your business into commercial accounts? You know, it's just a, just a marketing, marketing ploy. But whatever, they try, I guess. Some people probably fall subject to it. Whoops. I think you did that, you big dummy. ranted and raved about advanced auto and my extreme hatred for them not really hatred they just piss me off more than they make me happy uh i got the torque converter bolt in and all tightened down and a little bit of loctite on those we're gonna take and put this little guy here back together whatever you want to call it um, and then we're just going to keep moving on. So that's what we got to do. Because if we get all pissed off over advance, we screw up our whole day. It just it really won't make anything any better long term. Even though we think it will. It doesn't change the situation, but. So I'm just going to pick this up a little bit. We need to bolt it to the engine first. I'm obviously going to have to get an extension. Won't I get you? Just want to make sure it's up somewhat, somewhat flush there. Then we're going to bolt it to the block and then you know, or I'm sorry, voltage transmission then up to the block. Alright. So I need to take the uh, one bell housing bolt we put in up here. Gotta take that back out uh, because we've got to put our big bracket on there where is it right here 
So remember we had this big engine mount that go, goes up here. It had the longer bell housing bolt in it. So it goes up here. Somewhere else. It goes up there like that. It's got the bell housing bolt in it. Um, I was thinking if it's any easier to do the starter without this in, but I don't think it really matters. So we'll get our bolts started in this. We'll get our bell housing bolt tight, and I'll tighten these two down. And like I say, these are your standard bell housing bolts. This is the one that goes in the bracket. It's just a smidge bigger. So we'll get that in. We'll get our starter on after we get this tightened down. Because I left the bolt back in there for this hose, so we'll get that hose on. Um, let's see our wiring harness running the outside of that, so we don't have anything to worry about there. Uh, and you gotta remember on the back side of the block, you gotta hook up the knock sensor. Uh, that was like the only wire I think we had to get from down here, so that was pretty cool. Uh, the wiring harness actually did a good job on this. You didn't have to uh, you know, really remove much to get it off. It just, uh, well, we had to take the alternator off or something just to get that harness all the way down through here, so that was uh, some pretty good, pretty good thought process there. That they put into that. They probably knew these engines were going to be coming out. <laughs> so, alright, we'll get this finished up. Oh, when you get in a bad mood, it doesn't pay. Because you do stupid crap like this. Once this bracket's on, you cannot get the other bell housing bolt in. So, I realized that fortunately before I got the top bolts tight. So, stick your lower bell housing bolt in first. I guess it's the plan. I just hate it when my plans get derailed. Have I done enough pissing and moaning yet? I think so. I think so. Center hydrate back here. Let's plug that in, and then, like I say, they had this little tin shield that went over it. Try to keep it from getting burned up on the exhaust. That just clicked over the connector, right like that, and it just that was it. So we've got that, and then we've got the extra bell housing bolt. Uh, we've got one left. Goes back here, right up above the. Right up above the axle. Um, if you guys can see that, but that goes in, you know, right up in there. As I'm completely out of position trying to put that in. So we'll take and tighten that one up. Try to get things buttoned up under here. They brought that gasket back up. I sprayed it with some high tack. So we'll get ready to see if that goes on the water pump. If that water pump can go in without the hub hitting or any kind of interference issue there. And then we we'll just have to keep on trucking because that's all we can do. All right, so here's the gasket. It is, you know, the right one. Like I say, it's a little, little different thickness. So stuck on there. I'll slide it up in. Like I say, if you've got any problems, it's going to be rotating the hub. So I'll uh, slip it up in there, get it bolted down. Get it bolted down. We'll go from there. All right, guys, so I've got it in, got it snugged up. I don't feel any any kind of interference issues, so it must be that gasket was sufficient, or there's not, you know, the close tolerance that I might have suspected. But uh, it's on, it's tight, it's a factory specs, of course. So I guess we can keep on moving forward here. I'm using all the parts off from this. Uh, off the used engine that we got simply because it was supposedly, well, I don't want to say supposedly because it is, uh, you know, a 70,000 mile engine. And, uh, you know, so technically these parts have, you know, half the mileage of the engine that we're taking out. So we'll, we'll definitely use their, you know, their belt tensioner and uh, the idler pulley and stuff that goes up top because that's the only thing I think that makes sense. 
So I'm gonna get this on the other idler pulley, wherever that is, let's see, right here. So we've got this little idler pulley that goes up top. Um, whoa, almost got hit right in the beak. Um, so we'll get that on and then uh, put the harmonic balancer on. We'll do our little water uh, inlet pipe here for the water pump. And I think we can throw our, oh, that big cross member where that bolt came out harder than heck. We'll get that on there and get these, you know, these mounts retightened up. Um, and then we can hook up our exhaust while we're under here, just kind of get things buttoned up underneath so we can just go up top and do everything we've got to do up there and you know, not have to, you know, raise it back up. And we should be in good shape. So just get the O-ring a little shot of fluid film there. Get that up on there. And then a couple of, uh, a couple of the short bolts to hold that on. Let's see. thing I like about the old Nano. I've got good trigger control. I've got that big honky tonk and uh, nitro astro or nitro thing or whatever air cat big you know seven zillion foot pounds it has like no trigger control it's on or off so that's a really difficult impact to use so Okay, I think all this stuff is on. We'll hook, we can hook this hose back up. Even though I had to cut some of this off, um, there's still plenty, you know, plenty of hose. Yeah, definitely won't, won't cause any issue there. Uh, so I'm happy about that. And we can uh, get our starter in. We're, we're rolling now, folks. Let's see if we can get our starter toss back on here. That had a little shimmer in front of it. Just gotta make sure that kind of stays put. And add a couple bolts that ran in from the uh, transmission side into the starter. Top, one at the bottom. So we'll get those in. I know I've had a few people question me on, um, you know, engine replacement videos or you know major you know repair videos, like why I don't go through and. You know, polish every everything basically, <laughs> um, and it's. I guess I can just leave it the simple fact that I just I don't have time, um, and I don't think that you know polishing the starter or other accessories that are unnecessary will uh, you know be any kind of gain overall into the end product. Um, you know, personally, that's just kind of my thought on that. Uh, if it's your own, you know, if it's your own vehicle and, you know, you want to shine every, every piece you take off and stuff, that's, that's fantastic. Um, you know, I'd say go for it. Uh, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. Like I said, I don't know if it'll actually help anything, but uh, that's just kind of my two, two cents on that. Slip in, slip in between the black and the transmission there. Okay. Make sure that was going correctly. Now, don't get me wrong. If I take something off that needs to be sealed, then absolutely. I mean, you know, you have to clean it. I mean, I'm not saying I, you know, I go at this like a caveman, but uh, you know, I can't take the time to, you know, pressure wash the engine bay and repaint it and you know do all that kind of stuff uh, frankly because no if the customer wanted me to sure but <laughs> you know that's usually not the usually not the case well this starter is about mopping the floor with me here but I do focus on doing a good job there I can take it down 
uh, you know, doing, doing the best job that we can, you know, making sure things are put back exactly as they're supposed to be. Uh, I think that's more important than, than anything, in my opinion. More important than any type of cleaning or polishing you can do, you know. So, you can polish a turd, and it's still a turd, but it's about the best I can tell you. <clears throat> Got our starter shoved up in here. Got a couple bolts started in that. A little tin shield that goes between the starter and the bell housing. Don't forget that. Let's see if we can't get these started without pinching our air ratchet in here. filter out there. Oh, I was trying to figure out where we're at. One thing we can do while we're right here is put our uh, put our studs back in for the AC. Remember we had to take these out to get the engine in. That was one of the biggest hang-ups. If we had pulled them out originally that engine would have came out just smooth that smooth as butter. But uh, didn't so I'll screw back and they have uh, inverted torques on the front of them so you don't have to use a stud installer or stud remover like we did taking them out I don't know what size they are it's an E something here E7 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 waiting for some old lady to yell bingo there's not even an E in bingo I'm talking about down here let's take in the should be able to stick our compressor right up in here I think let's get that slide it back on there she is so we'll get that I'm gonna tighten up I went ahead and put the uh, water pump pulley on I was able to just get that from underneath here so I slid that up on there no sweat got that tightened down we'll do the same thing with this compressor find the other nut here. We'll get that on and get that tightened down. And the only thing I'm going to do is all your power steering pump. And uh, that should be it, but it sounds like my other appointment just showed up. So we're probably going to have to leave this till darn near the end of the day at this point. very nice we'll get our hose clamps snugged up here and that we're right over here in this vicinity it was not my appointment it just showed up I thought it was got a guy coming he's actually driving all the way from New Jersey couldn't find a shot between here and a five-hour drive to do an intake manifold on a Dodge Caravan of all things so I tried to refer them to a few other shops that were down there that I, or at least one other shop that I knew of, but his wife insisted that he comes to SMA and evidently on his way here, he blew a tire and he left at like five o'clock in the morning, but it's like 11.30 now, it's almost lunchtime. So, sounds like it's gonna be a late night for me. Gotta do that. He's got a catalytic converter sitting over there. You want a catalytic converter, intake manifold, training lines, and the training service. 
you're supposed to be here at 9 a.m. Like I say, it's almost noon. Awesome. We should be able to put this thing back up on here. Get this kind of hold up here for us. This little guy came out hard, if you guys remember that. Put the old nano through her paces. Let's see, that's going to be the two, that the two shorter bolts. That is the two shorter bolts. Get that, and we've got one really short bolt that goes way back. I believe, yep. And then the three longer ones. Get all them in. Torque down to the factory specifications. And then, I think we're making progress. Different sizes. Always I got us a new flange gasket, assuming that's right. It's kind of the 50-50 gamble today, whether things are right or wrong. Let's see if that looks like it's going to be remotely close. Well, it appears to be correct. Uh, I did not get the OEM, uh, you know, like those nuts that go on, um, or they call like encapsulated nuts, or whatever you want to call them there. Uh, we're just going to use some standard, you know, 8 millimeter bolts. And, uh, I don't know where they are, 8 by 40 or something like that. Let's see if we can. Look at that. One corner of it started here. We should be home free after that. There it is. So, like I said, we're just going to use a standard nut bolt, flat washers. And I'll go through and I'll get all these started. We should be able to snug them up, no problem. And like I say, the cool thing about Chrysler is how they did this and the fact that if we ever need to take this apart again, all we gotta do is get up in there with a the torch, just pull the heads off these bolts and everybody's happy. At least I'm happy. But what sucks is when you got a manifold and it's a manifold and a stud you gotta be really careful not to break the stud or at least have a, have a plan to repair it in the event that you do. So. Well guys, I don't have any idea where we left off. It's about 8.30 at night. It's always on your own business, right? So I had 4.08 Town & Country's in today. <laughs> I wonder if it's a Dodge thing. It was a Dodge day, I know that. and. Uh, I didn't dodge any bullets today. Oh man, uh, everything just mopped in the floor with me. So last one that just came in, these folks from New Jersey, they just took way longer than anticipated. Plus we added a bunch of stuff to the list. So we ended up doing, you know, serpentine belt, PCV valve, intake gasket, training service and training lines, a catalytic converter, and you know, just a bunch of stuff. And oddly enough, it was cheaper for him to drive five hours, come here, I installed all OEM dealer parts, than it was for the dealer down there to put on one catalytic converter. I don't know, sounds like I need to raise my price. Uh, anyhow, so I got this, this old eight caravan here for an ABS module, simple, you know, gravy work. Uh, and then one screw out of the four that hold the ABS module to the hydraulic control unit came out. The other three, I had to go in there with a mirror and a cutoff wheel. No, I didn't record it because there was like, Hardly enough room to get my red raw arm down in there with a cutoff wheel and a mirror and holding a flashlight in my teeth and 
trying to get that off. So I finally got that off and I got all the broken bolts out, the new controller on. And um, I just want to get it out of here. <laughs> I just want to get it out of here. So our engine job is going to have to wait till tomorrow. So we'll pick up on this tomorrow. Hopefully the day goes smoother. I got a Brazilian thing to do tomorrow too. So and coming in early this morning and then going home late kind of sucks, but tis life. So thanks for watching.